So there's the bomb. It's a it was a solid steel. Solid steel. Meant to withstand high pressure. Yep. Got a tool to lift. That doesn't twist, it just lifts it out. Lifts it out. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite simple. Depressurizer, no. repressurizer. Just not wanting to come out right now. I think we're gonna learn to leave this. Out. There it is, perfect. <laughs> or you throw it against the wall, right? First thing I like to do just right away is to get the one of the ignition wicks placed onto the it's one of those little fine threads. You just peel it thread. off of the yep. And this has a calibrated value already of 50 joules, so oh, it's incorporated into your the bomb already knows how much it's going to use. Do we have to subtract it out, or will it be accounted it for? Already accounted for. Okay. And so you make a loop. It goes over a wire. Just a generic loop? Yep. And then you pull it through the loop. So you're just tying a knot, basically. Basically. If you're good at it. So why, why do we need that? Why can't we just use a spark? Uh, this will provide a better More ignition. More standard? Yeah, better right, ignition. Better ignition. Okay. Exactly. All right, so now that we have that set up, we're going to use one of the little crucibles that's going to contain our sample. Does that limit our sample size then? This does limit our sample size. Um, sample size is limited no matter what. You really need to try to keep, hopefully you have an idea of what the energy is worth. I can't put my foot in there? No, you can't put your foot <laughs> inside this. They do make larger ones, but you still have to keep it under 40,000 joules per gram. So you need to, there's a limit to the total energy because there's a safety there's issue a there. safety issue, yeah. If we go up too high, it might you know burn too high or the explosion the pressure be could too be too much. Exactly. 40,000? Joules, joules per gram. gram. So 40 kilojoules per gram is the exactly. limit. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. That so, is pretty limiting if you're doing fuels. So we have, this is a little benzoic acid uh, pellet. This is the standard, what we use for calibrating the machine. So we can check to see where our calibration is at. So we know the heat of combustion of that yes. sample. And so we can put a definite amount of heat into the calorimeter. Correct. So now what we're doing is we're taking our sample we're going to place, hopefully the string will stay inside. Sometimes you have to bend it around a little. You want it in the crucible? You want it in the crucible with the sample. And sometimes it's actually easier to leave your sample out ah. and then place it in there. Crucible so is okay. We're going to actually, mean. before we do this, because although it says the right weight of the pellet on the box, we should mass the pellet. So, so we've just come things. back from weighing the pellet. We're going to place our pellet into crucible. The wick here should be touching that pellet. We want it on the sample. Should we have it on the sample. So it's just sitting underneath it. So is it going to use electricity to heat the wire? Exactly. And then the wire burns up the filament? Burns up the filament and there's enough oxygen in there to produce a full burn of that. That doesn't twist and you're just pressing you that press in. You press that in and you have to be careful so you don't shift your materials inside. Right. Use the lock union nut. Twist it only to hand tight, don't use any kind of machine. Hand tight. And then you are ready to fill the bomb with oxygen. Okay. So we're going to take it over to the filling station. That's the fun part. Okay. So, filling station, you set the bomb on the marks, and then you lock the bomb down till it clicks. Okay, that's opening the valve. And that is that would open the valve, but we have our tank closed currently. Right. So we make sure that our tank is not going to fill this instantly with oxygen. We turn our regulator valve closed, and then we can open up our gas. So your regulator is now in the off? Our regulator is now in the you, off. You turn that counter counterclockwise to turn it off. And then that's counterintuitive, isn't it? It is counterintuitive. Oh boy, that's not good. So we just turn this on by turning the knob counterclockwise. So now our oxygen is on, and we can see that we have pressure on the tank side of the pressure regulator. The and now we're ready to fill up on the regulator side. On both the filling station and the regulator, we have pressure gauges, which will allow us to see the current pressure inside of the bomb itself. So we'll slowly start turning this so handle that, in. Well, that has to move quite a bit. It'll move quite it. a bit, exactly. We just kind of turn it out a lot as a safety precaution. 
and then hopefully once we get there. So that's already starting to take some. And it'll start to take some. And when you're filling up, you do want to be slow with filling the bomb because you don't want to blow out any of the material that you have. Sure. What's our target pressure? Here? Our target is 25 bar. 25 bar, so bar, yep. like 25 over atmospheric essentially. Exactly. So we're almost up there. Well, that was pretty gentle. We didn't even see anything on the regulator side. Yeah, it's apparently our regulator may not be functioning correctly. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> our regulator requires a little tap. Made in America. Time. All right, so you try to get it approximately is this those part two. of the calibration? Does it matter that it much is, to them? It does. They require that you put 25 bar, so you try to get it as close. And then okay. once it's steady at 25 bar, you can lift this handle up. You'll hear a snap. That's the and valve that's on the, the valve. bomb closing. Yeah, the valve on the bomb closing. When we're done here, before we walk away, we make sure to turn off this again. You'll hear the gas coming out. So we release our pressure out of our regulator, and then we close our tank. Now we're ready to walk back over to the bomb. Okay, now the, the tank pressure stays stays constant as it is. I mean, that, that that's just showing us what's Correct. in the tank left. Right here, this is our, uh, essentially what's gonna conduct our electricity to the bomb. Okay. It's the cap that gets put on. So this cap gets pushed down onto the top of the bomb, and then you are able to hold the bomb by that. Okay. Once that's ready, you lift up your bomb, and there are three prongs inside of the calorimeter itself, and our bomb is gonna sit on top of those three prongs. Okay. Once it's set in there, we can turn on our machine. Now we've already previously filled the water to this level here to be between these two lines, okay? Just so between them. Okay. When the machine's turned on, you'll see on the screen that there's another button that says on for F1, so we'll press on. Now it says it's waiting for us to make our next decision. We have off, prepare, and menu. If we were gonna go change some settings, we'd go to menu, but mm -hmm. since the, it's already established and ready to go, we will hit prepare. Mm -hmm. When we're in here, the weight of the sample goes into the first line. Since we know the weight of our sample, we had 0 0.5152. Then it goes down to calibration. Since we're running a calibration sample, but we don't necessarily want to calibrate the machine, we're going to leave that at a zero. If we were calibrating the machine, we'd put a one in there. This is vessel one. It is the only bomb we have. If we had a different bomb, it would be calibrated differently. So we'd add in whatever vessel number it is. Do you need to calibrate it for each real experiment then? We would for each experiment, it's actually not required. You should recalibrate it you know, right. after a series of okay. experiments. Uh, the Q external is the external energy that is being in addition to the sample. Yes. So we have entered 50 there. That was for our wick. So right. the machine knows to calculate that in. Q external two would be if we added an accelerant instead of just oxygen, if we added another gas to it okay. to make the sample burn better. Sure. So once we're done here, we click OK. Mm -hmm. And now it asks if our storage is filled, and that was what was showed earlier over on the side of the machine. So we see that we're between the lines, okay. and our storage is filled and ready to go. Is it going to take a standard amount that what, what it It'll wants? It'll take a standard amount of what it wants. Okay. So we click continue. Vessel closed safely. That is referring to the bomb itself. So as long as we didn't hear any hissing coming out of the bomb, we know that the oxygen is sealed inside of it. We click OK again. And it's asking us to close the cover. So right now where we've placed it into, our cover is open. The cover will swing over and close. Wow. And now it is starting to fill with Taking water. The water we can actually so we can see, actually level see dropping. the water dropping. Mm -hmm. And the machine is now set up to run all by itself. It will fill the entire uh, container. It'll wait for a couple of seconds to stabilize the temperature or read the temperature of the water inside where the bomb is currently. I see that, act is that the active temperature? That is the temperature up in the corner. And then once that is done and it is stabilized for a minute or so, it will actually do the firing on its own. You're not required to do All anything. Automated. All automated and after about eight minutes, it'll then give you the results on the screen. Eight minutes later, we get the results and the result will just be a temperature or an energy? The result will be an energy per gram. So it won't even let us get the temperature. Will it give us a temperature? Or it will it? not give us a temperature. If we wanted to, we could sit here and record the temperature, but this machine will not provide you with a temperature. All right, and it'll give us the energy per gram, per gram. of what we put in there. Exactly. Okay. All right, so it's actually, what is it doing? 
Right now it's just making sure that our temperature is staying at a fairly constant or at oh, least it internal, knows okay. its value. Mm -hmm. And so it'll equalize for a couple of minutes and then it will start the test. Okay, and then it's gonna wait, you're saying, until... How does it know when to stop measuring? Like what is it, it knows because it will set its amount of time and it will get a value of how high the temperature is changing currently and use that as a standard in its own calculations. I see. So it lit the sample on fire. That was the explosion. Explosion, the beep. The beep. And now it's running its main test. You see it's taken three minutes so far. By the time this bar gets to the end, the whole test will be done. Okay. You can actually watch now the temperature is going up at a higher rate than before. So, considering that I guess we just burned up our pretty small thing, um, we wouldn't expect the temperature to go soaring up here. No. <laughs> I mean, it's not meant to But it to looks like it. it'll probably go up a, probably a degree and a half by the time it's done. Is that like for a typical sample? That'd be a typical sample. You know, you would get like, you're not looking for like a 50 degree shift, no. so that would be way too much energy. You're looking for, for a very small shift depending on how much it is. So this is more about precision than it is about bang. Correct. Yeah, it's the bomb, the name bomb calorimeter is used a little too, <laughs> a little too much in terms of what it actually does. Notice the hose, is which is not cleverly connected to a drain, has to be ready to be, uh, let's just say the machine relieves itself after the test. And you need a place for it to go. Receptacle. All right. Progress. A couple minutes out. So we're almost done. So it literally is eight minutes? Stand, like, is that a standard it's, time? It's a standard eight minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were just asking me. I'm like, wow, you're pretty good. <laughs> standard eight minutes. So have a bunch of kids worked on this at all? or? Uh, a few kids have worked on it. It was mostly so far being worked with biofuels. And that's... Which are kind of oily? Yep, oily substances. They are liquids, so it did show us that we can burn liquids. We can do powders now as well. Oh, you have the press? We have a pellet press now, okay. so we can use pellets. Do they just press directly, or do you have to put anything around them? Nope, you don't have to put anything around them. They can press directly. You put a standard mass in it? Uh-huh. We can mass it afterwards. I mean, is there a minimum you need to pre produce a pellet? Uh, I don't believe so, no, because you can adjust the height so you can use even a small amount. So if you were to create some solid that you wanted to burn oh. in here but didn't know but you wanted to use all of it, you could put it all on the pellet press. Pellet press. Pellet press, yep. And so, stuff. Oh, this one. And there's our value. Our value. 26,544 joules per gram. You heard it here first. So we used a 0.5152 grams, and so we'd be able to calculate exactly how much energy our tablet had. Right on. So how do we get out of here now? What do so we do So once, once we're done here, all we need to do, because we have our result, is we lift up the lid. Lifting the lid will allow the machine to empty down into our receptacle that is placed into our drawer to hold it up. So basically, it's uh, once you lift that up, it sets off the water to come sets out of the... Sets the water off. Yeah. So we have a couple paper towels handy. And emergency backup? Emergency backup, we usually just dry off wow. the temperature probe and the ignition probes so we don't drip water all over the machine. No electrocution risk here? No electrocution <laughs> risk. Not for here. So it takes a couple of seconds to empty. You don't have to wait till it's all empty, so once it's starting to become empty, you can lift the bomb out. So we lift the bomb out, take a paper towel. Now, is there still a significant amount of pressure in there? There is still a significant amount of pressure, so we do need to be careful, but we also need to take off our Slide lid. Off. Okay. Just dry that off quickly, we can set that off to the side. Now we have the bomb with quite a bit of gas still left inside, so we need to go relieve this gas. We take our pressure relief valve. Uh, this is gonna open up our valve when we place it under the hood, so we'll take it over the hood because we're not sure of what's in those gas. It's true, we, when you burn it, and if it's a, especially if it's a, 
got the possibility of producing some strange oxides. So place it under our hood, make sure our face is away from it, and we just take the little red plunger, press down into the middle. And we wait till there's no air left coming out and then we're ready to open up the bomb. So we'll take it back to our station. So it's fair to assume based on what we read that it wasn't hot gas. Correct. So it's not like your hand was in any danger of being No, cool. your hand should not be in any <laughs> danger, especially with the pressure, should keep it pretty cool. All right, so once it's uh, been relieved, it's safe to take off the union nut. We then can use... Look for the union label. So then we can take off the top of the bomb again. We can That's use still our... in there with enough Correct, so it came out a lot easier there. Came out a lot easier because see it hasn't been sitting there. around. So now we can actually see there's condensation that's formed on the inside of the bomb, so you can see some of the water droplets from the... Remember, that was sealed, so that water was so produced the, in the combustion. That water was produced in the combustion, then we can see there's some inside. Ash. There is a little bit of ash in there, but overall it's a clean combustion. There's no tablet that's left, and we can check inside the bomb itself make sure that our tablet did not come out when we were filling with oxygen. Well, that's interesting. So overall, a clean burn. We do want to clean the quartz crucible quickly so that we don't leave any residues and it is easier What is to that residue out. from, would you know? Or? I don't know what that residue would come from. Possibly an impurity in the actual benzoic acid pellet. Okay. So well, sure. our battery is just about dead. And that's about it. So right now we're just going to clean it up, put it back together, and then it's ready to do another test. Awesome. All right, well, thank you. You're welcome.